said, if you don't cooperate, this can go different ways. Putting others in harm's way should never be taken lightly. One should always refrain from committing acts that may cause distress to those around them. But what happens when people ignore the risks and act recklessly? State of Florida, you stand up. Turn around. Yeah, we gotta, you gotta be detained right now, bud, right? From a family man who jeopardizes his own family's safety to someone intending bodily injuries to the men and women of law, watch as these individuals realize their actions have consequences. Here are some incidents where law enforcement officers put their lives in danger to apprehend dangerous individuals. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, if you put my pants, I'm going to My pants don't fall. Charlie, The first incident revolves around 33-year-old Quincy Campbell. On March 19, 2022, police were called by Walt Disney World Security when they noticed a firearm and questionable items during their screening. The officers quickly arrived at the scene and began their preliminary investigation. The situation unfolded in Orange County, California. The officers informed Quincy that he could be jailed for carrying the firearm. He informed that the firearm did not belong to him and he only collected it from one of his relatives. The officers explained to him that he may still be facing charges. Okay, okay. All right. Florida, you're supposed to have a license to carry. You can't, you could go to jail for that. I'm just letting you know. Why? Well, I have. I didn't carry nothing. You had it on you. Yeah. Yeah, I took this. You were totally right, but I did it right in front of him. You did it right in front of him. That's what I'm saying. He see you take the bag from her. You gotta ask him. I can't speak. Be right there and not see. I don't know. I can't see 100%. I can't see. We're going to talk to who we got to talk to and we're going to see what we're going to do. But I'm just letting you know it's possible you can go to jail. Because in Florida, you have to have a If it's only possession in a bag under, you have to have a license. I just put it right there because I want to talk to him. I understand, but still. One of the officers examined the firearm. The officer proceeded to question the family members. He asked if any of them had proper documentation for it. You don't have it with you? So nobody has a license? For, no, not a license like, uh, to carry. In Florida? I have it in North Carolina, but it's Oh, okay. Do you have it with you? I can get it out of my car. Oh, okay. Just give me one second. I'm gonna, so in Florida, to carry on you, you need a license. And if you don't carry, it's a felony. It's a felony, okay? So I'm not saying he's going to jail, but it's a possibility that he can. Another officer is seen holding Quincy by the throat with one hand. The officer then instructed him to spit out whatever was in his mouth. The cop alleged that he was trying to swallow something. He also noticed that Quincy was chewing whatever was in his mouth. Spit it out. No, 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 spit it out. Hold on, he got some in his mouth. Spit it out. Hold on, 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 spit it out. Don't. Spit it out. Wait, hold on. Just let it. Just leave it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Let it go. Let it go. No, no, no. He already swallowed it. It's okay. He already swallowed it. 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 Just let it go. He already swallowed it. Just let it go. 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 The officer decided to put a handcuff on him and detain him. Did he swallow, do you know any type of drug he swallowed? Just in case, because if he swallowed drugs, he swallow? could possibly. It don't if, if it what did he swallow? Did he swallow? Got that got to go what did he swallow? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Quincy was then searched for further contraband. The cops who were initially involved in the incident discussed the situation with others. They briefly go over the charges he may be facing. Well, if I close my legs, my pants would have fallen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, if you push my... Oh, all right. I'm telling you, if you push my pants, I'm going to fall. My pants don't fall. Charlie, my pants don't fall. I'm holding them. I'm holding them with my fingers. I'm holding them with my fingers. His pants came loose. Yeah, you grip it. Come on. Don't throw. Don't throw. Yeah, give me one second. I'll be back. Does he not? He doesn't have a permit at all anywhere? So we don't know what exactly he took. No, I Okay, so we're. Okay. What's up, dude? Okay, well, I mean, if we don't know what he took, we can't say he swallowed drugs. Well, he's got a green leaf or something. 
putting well, well, I'm saying, if it, or whatever whatever you just put in there, That's I don't think he took that. Right. So he's got misdemeanor marijuana. Not even, because we can't do it. If it's hemp, it's, uh, we don't Well, that, it. well, yeah. Yeah, we just got for destruction. You could, and then just the carrying right. field. Right. Paramedics arrive at the scene and meet up with the officers. They are briefed about the whole situation. The officers let them know about the possible contraband he swallowed. Quincy is then questioned by the officers. Despite the officer's persuasion, he refused to acknowledge anything. Did you guys see him do it or? They, they saw him, I don't know what they saw him actually do. They said that he, they saw him throw something in his mouth. We don't know what it is. Okay. I haven't even had a chance to talk to him to find out, hey man, did you swallow, just like be honest with me, did you swallow drugs? Like, we need to know for you guys. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to try to talk to him, see if he'll tell you what he took. Okay, is he under arrest? As of now, he's detained. Okay. Hey, look, though, if we ain't going to no gum in your mouth when I met you. Yes, I did. I spit it out right there. Listen, let me, let me tell you this. This this can go very, very easily for you. Um, but, but, hold on. Because I, I, I'm not trying to step over the toes of the other deputy. I'm telling you this right now. This can go very easily for you. Or this can go sideways. So the more you can cooperate with us. Well, I might not cooperate with you. I'm having a question that. Okay well, when, okay, well, when he comes over here and talks to you to find out what's going on, because as of now, all I know is that you possibly took something. I didn't. I'm telling you I have. So how am I not cooperating with you? I, I didn't, never said so you I Hold on. No, I never told you you were. I said if you don't cooperate. Up. No, no, I'm talking. I'm talking here. I'm talking. Okay, then listen to me. I never said that you were cooperating. I said if... This conversation going to end if I can't speak. Then you're going to just... I'm just then, gonna then, like then guess what? We're going to be done, and then we're just going to go the way I need to go. Yeah, because I'm... I'm trying to work with you. But I can't speak. You're going to just tell Because I'm trying to finish what I was saying to you. I just Simple as that, right? I try to speak no, because you said I, you, I said you weren't cooperating. I said if you don't cooperate, this can go different ways. The officer decided to talk to his family instead. He discovers that one of the family members had a permit, and the firearm belonged to her. The officer explained the entire situation to the family. He also informed them that Quincy would not be facing anything due to the firearm. He also advised the family to file complaints if they were uncomfortable with the choking incident. Campbell was brought to a local hospital to make sure that he did not need medical attention. When he was cleared to leave, Campbell was transported to the correctional facility. Do you know where the, the firearm was found? No, we don't. Do you know where, where who was told? Was, uh... I was You were carrying your firearm? Yes. And then how did... Here's the family's piece they wanted. Yes, sir. Thanks, Scott. You have a valid concealed permit? May I see it, please? It was in his car. That's why we wanted to get the car to you. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to talk to this deputy. Look, I'm going to tell you plain. See these gray hairs? Yeah. So, again, this is Deputy Wark. He's my partner. We, we work around Disney and in Disney full time. Okay. The guys who work the stands, who work the checks, it's kind of like they're off today, but they come because Disney will hire them when they're off. Yeah. So we're here every day with Disney. 80 hours every two weeks, okay? These guys might be somewhere else during the week and then come here on the weekend. The wife has a permit, it's her firearm. And the sister, she, she, yeah, and they she, live together, they kind of all share it. She handed it over to the husband for a second and he went through, he goes, well, if that's the case, then we're not playing that game. There's no- No, yeah. we're not playing that game, exactly. But what Rich is concerned about now is because of their accusation that the other deputy choked him. Yes. Rich goes, that's on them. We, we're not, me and 1, you are not percent. gonna get our hands dirty. I asked him if they want a real supervisor. Um, we all come to the agreement in between that that's like 50 years of experience. Well, it's me and Curtis, but all right. Uh, that the gun is out. We'll put that thing back in your car. Right. However, I want to. I want you to be prepared. Disney is not a fan of right. what happened here. Yes, I've got to go. Yes. Yeah. So I think I think Disney's gonna. I think is gonna issue you a trespass. Now, what what does that mean? Who, the whole family or just? I think everyone, but I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Disney trespasses people. I'm telling you, we, we probably do 70 a day. So now we got to worry about. Um, I'm going to tell you um, now. Now I heard a little something about the choke. Okay, I wasn't here for it. I didn't witness it. Um, that's what they're talking about right now. But Listen, I, I wasn't here. If, if you want to make a statement, and, and I always tell people, I tell my wife this: um, if you ever feel you're wrong, 
Doesn't matter that your husband's a cop, 27 years with this woman. Yeah. If you feel you've been wronged, you feel like you want to say something, you should. I don't care if it's at a restaurant or at Disney or whatever. Campbell is expected to face charges for suspicion of felony possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, felony destruction of evidence, and misdemeanor possession of cannabis. While Campbell decided to put the lives of innocent children in danger, our next individual was a danger to himself. But before that, let's see what happens when someone points a gun towards a police officer. Hey, quit reading, I just said. Quit reading, yeah, come on. Come on, get done. The next story is about 38-year-old Jaron Bobbitt. On November 13th, 2023, the Louisville Metro Police Department was responding to a domestic violence complaint. Upon arriving at the scene, police noticed Jaron on the driveway with an AR-style pistol. He immediately took off and a foot chase commenced. Jaron was a career criminal and a convicted felon. Multiple officers arrive at the address and notice Jaron in the driveway. He started running from the officers. They instantly started chasing him on foot. In the middle of the chase, an officer notices a weapon and unholsters his firearm. The officer orders Jaron to put the weapon down. Instead of complying, he kept running with the weapon in his hand. Suddenly, Jaron points the weapon towards the cop. The officer immediately discharges his firearm. Put it down! Put it down! Put it down! Put it down! Put the gun down! Put it down now! Drop the freaking gun! Drop it! Now! Others finally catch up with the officer and promptly handcuff Jaron. They then put a tourniquet on his arm where he was hit. He was also provided with medical attention by the cops immediately. We see your hands! It's a toy. I can't we see your hands! I can't move, I got shot. The officers noticed multiple gunshot wounds once they removed his clothes. All the while, Jaron pleads with them not to let him die. He adds that he wouldn't have fired at the officer. Jaron Bobbitt faces charges of fourth degree assault, domestic violence, fleeing or evading police, wanton endangerment and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon in relation to Monday's event. His bond was set at $100,000 in cash. As mentioned before now, we will see how this man was a danger to himself. You bought it today, do you have any proof of a purchase of that? Uh, I don't, but I can call my friend. The third disturbance is caused by a serviceman. On October 24th, 2022, in Florida during a routine traffic stop, officers noticed a firearm in the vehicle. He immediately took possession of it. What's up, boss? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, I'm Officer Slam, YQS Police. Okay. Why do you have a firearm right there? The officer notices the firearm and instructs the servicemen to exit the vehicle. After he complies, the officer then inquires about it. He informed him of the legal regulations for firearms in Florida. Don't reach for it. Okay. Step on out. Step on out. I'm stepping out. Have a seat. Have a seat right there. Why do you have a firearm right there? I just bought it from my friend. Okay, is it, why is it sitting out in your seat? Uh, I didn't put it away yet. You know you can't have it just out like that in your car, man? Yeah. Only reason I grabbed you and pulled you out is because I see gun, all right? Okay. All right. The cop probes for further details from the man. He informs that he recently bought the gun. The man then produces an ID. The officer inquired if he had any other guns. Another officer arrives at the scene, and the first officer brings him up to speed about the incident. The second officer then asks the man about his deployment, and advises him to look up the Florida law about firearms. So you have no concealed weapons permit? You just bought the gun? Yes, Do you have like any today. You bought it today? Do you have any proof of a purchase of that? Um, I don't, but I can call my friend. When did you buy it? Like two, three hours ago. 
two, three hours ago, and how long has it just been sitting in your passenger seat? I didn't just put it in there. I just left my friend's house. I was going home. All right. Got your light. Do you have your license on you? Uh, I don't have my license. I lost it, but I do have an ID. Okay. No other weapons on you right now, right, no. man? All right. I'm gonna secure that. Do you mind just watching him real quick? What's that? Why do you have it out like that? He says he just bought it. So I just grabbed him and took him out. Because he had it out readily. He's got no concealed. So it can't even be like that. That's that'll get you that'll get you to not ever have a gun. So why would you have it out just laying on the seat like that? I had just bought it and I was headed home. I didn't think anything of it. You can't uh, when you get home, research uh, Florida concealed carry. Okay. Print out that sheet and it'll tell you everything you can have and, ha and not have with it, okay? okay? During their background check, they discovered that the individual had a risk protection order in his name and could not own any type of firearm. They also recognized him from a previous incident. Your phone's in the car, right? What? I said your phone is in the car, right? All that stuff, okay. Yeah, I'll grab back with you, bud. He's been banker at it. Oh, that's the guy. Holy yeah, shit. Is... Remember, we were out there for it. He got his gun. He just bought another gun. Damn. Uh, you know what? Uh, can we look up that old report? I think I'm right now. This is oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, look up the Baker Act. The officer contacted the sergeant and briefed him on the situation. They sought his guidance on the next steps. He told them that the serviceman was prohibited from having a firearm due to an RPO. Now I'll be calling your phone. This one's a good one. So um, he pulled him over. He could see the gun sitting in plain view on the seat. We talked to the guys, the military guys, like, oh, I just bought the gun off a friend. Remember that Baker Act we had over where we were all out there and I was eating the cheeseburger? It's that guy. And he's got a, he, oh, that's right, he does. So we have to take it. Mm. Yep, okay. Yeah, he just, so uh, was he do a follow-up to the main report? Hey, uh, yep, yep, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll do that right now. Okay, all right, yep. He's got an RPO, can't even have a gun, so it's I gotta get, to what's that? He's gotta go to jail. Though. Well, we gotta talk to 7-9 to make sure that that's actually in the thing. An officer examines the gun. He noticed that it had been used recently. He then proceeded to run the serial number for further details. He relays the information to dispatch. Are you sure that's the only weapon in the car? That is the only weapon in All the right. car. All right, just sit tight. Been fired recently. I'm gonna run a serial number on a firearm whenever you're ready. It's going to be a Glock 22 40 caliber, and the serial number is going to be Bravo Uniform Hotel Papa 408. B U H P 408. I tried running it in my in car, got no return. I think it's weird with Glocks sometimes. The officers then decide that the man is a danger to himself. They conclude that they will keep the firearm for safekeeping. The man did not even possess the proper paperwork for it. Hey, you remember that RPO you did on the Navy base uh, a while back with the Baker Act? Navy kid, yeah, where I was eating that cheeseburger. Uh, so uh, a Sloan White pulled him over and just saw a gun on the seat. And he said, oh, I just bought it from a friend. And we ran his info, found out that's the guy from your call, but he's got an RPO, right? So he shouldn't even have any guns. Uh, does, is that a 1015 or how does that work? So he doesn't know, Roberts doesn't know when the judgment was handed down on that with the guns. He doesn't have the paperwork with them. And since we can't find out, we're just going to take it for safekeeping right now until we can, you know what I mean? Like, just hold the gun. The serviceman is informed about his situation. The officers tell him that he will be detained and then they handcuff him. Another officer describes their reasoning behind seizing the firearm and his detainment. He is then escorted to a police cruiser. For a hold, I guess. Is yeah. it a hold? Yeah, it's going to be a hold, so, yeah. Same, like we were talking about. All right. So we have a couple issues right now, man. Okay. okay. One of them, 
State of Florida, you can stand up. Turn around. Yeah, we gotta you gotta be detained right now, bud, alright? Hold on a second. I don't want this to yeah. uh if I can get that off there. There's a latch on it. A latch on it. I don't want that to, does that come off or how, how there you go. All right, I just don't want to, to We don't want to break it. This, you're detained right now, right? Okay. Give me one second. There it is. Just don't want these sitching up on you, man. You got big wrists. So basically what he's gonna explain is um, you had your RPO back in August about guns, right? Yes. So let's, go let's walk over to my car, boss. Right At the station, it was revealed that he was driving with a suspended license. The officer then talks to him about his RPO. He also counseled him to avoid self-harm. I'm gonna seatbelt you too, all right? Is that the best you could do? Yeah, I can't. Brother, you got a citation that says driving with license suspended without knowledge. Not according to us. And you don't have your license on you, so what does that tell me? Come on, man. There's a reason. You know why. People are gonna be sad, pissed, and hate you if you go on your terms like that, man. What's up? For a little bit, horseshit. We don't wanna see you go. Nobody does. Even if you think otherwise, we don't. I t and if you're going through it, and if this ain't the place for you, then this ain't the place for you. But going the route you're going, man, this that's not, that's not the route you gotta take. You look like a fighter to me, man. You look like someone who, wa who wants to keep fighting. You look like someone who can take it, who can handle it. You don't look like someone who's gonna give up. You look like someone who's gonna actually look at the finish line and say, I got this. I talk to a lot of people for this job, man. I do not strike you as someone who's a quitter. And if that's a conversation you needed to have with someone, you don't strike me as a quitter, man. The serviceman was detained for his RPO violation and the firearm was seized by law enforcement. While the serviceman was a threat not only to himself, the last individual was a threat to everyone around her. Ryan. Okay, go, 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 go. Our last incident is centered around 51-year-old Suzanne Laprise. She entered the Bristol Police Department with a gun on October 5th, 2023. Multiple officers soon engaged Suzanne and tried to apprehend her. Suzanne enters the police station while holding the firearm to her head. She walks towards the front desk and bangs on the glass with her firearm. She then fires her weapon thrice inside the station, but the bullets fail to penetrate the bullet-resistant glass. Suzanne removed her jacket and sat in the waiting area. She chose a seat that overlooks the door towards the inside of the police station. She again proceeds to point the firearm on her head. Upon noticing officers near the door, she fires her weapon twice more.
She then walks towards the officers without her firearm. One of the officers then discharges his gun but misses Suzanne. The officers instructed her to get on the ground. Instead of complying, she started to behave erratically. Are these, hey, are these windows bulletproof? Yep. Shots fired. Are these windows bulletproof? We have two cars going out to the front. Is she, that's her right here, right? Laptop, yep. Get down! Get down on the ground! <coughs> Fire Did you see her, Spence? Nope, she just went back. Get down on the ground! Upon noticing Suzanne unarmed, the officers quickly closed the gap between them. One of the officers used a taser on her. Multiple officers immediately apprehended and handcuffed her. Officers detained La Prise and took her to a local hospital for evaluation. She was released from the hospital and back in the custody of Bristol police. Brian. Okay, go, 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 go. Brian. Okay, go, 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 go. La Prise was charged with criminal attempt at murder, illegal discharge of a firearm, illegally carrying firearms under the influence of intoxicants, criminal use of a weapon, violation of pistol permit requirements, illegally possessing a large capacity magazine, first degree criminal mischief, first degree reckless endangerment, and second degree breach of peace. To see more thrilling cases of criminals going crazy, please subscribe to our channel.